שלום, שבת פרשת לך לך. Uh, this week's parasha, we started to deal with Abraham Avinu, with the Avot, the Imahot. Uh, so much of what we are comes from the base of the Avot and the Imahot. And we need to look at what they, they, they've done. We know Maaseh Avot Siman Lebanim. We need to learn from what the Avot did, the way they lived their life, the way they treated other people. Uh, in order to understand how to do things. So one of the, one of the things that happens at the beginning of the parasha, Abraham, so Abraham is told, go to Eretz Yisrael and become a great nation, bring a blessing to the world. And Abraham goes to Eretz Yisrael, he arrives in Eretz Yisrael, and first place he goes is to Elon Moreh, and then the Pasuk reads the following, Perek Yudbet, Pasuk Chet, Vayatak Misham Ahara, Abraham uh, copies his place somewhere else, because he's moving somewhere else, Mikedem le Betel, okay, in front, place in front of a, a Betel, or Mikedem, east of Betel. Vayet Ohalo, Betel Miyam Ve'ayim Mikedem. And he builds his tent. Uh, Betel is on the west side, and the Ay is on the east side of him. That's giving us a geographic location. Uh, but what the Mepharshim notice is that when it says the word Ohalo, okay, Vayet Ohalo, so the Nikud is Ohalo, but the spelling is ohala, means the nikud is his tent, that he set his tent, and the, and the letters are that he set her tent, ohala. So Rashi straight away comments on, uh, Rashi comments on this, ohala ktiv, batchila nata oil ishto ve'achar kachet shelo. First, he arranged Sarah's tent, and then he arranged his tent. Uh, so this is something that's very small. You, you read it if you're only listening to Parashat Shavuot, you don't even notice that it happened because it's, it said Oalo. If you read Parashat Shavuot and you're alert enough, then you realize, wait, it says Oala and it reads Oala, something's going on here, and then you need to start looking for the, for the Midrash, for Rashi, for whoever is going to explain what happened over here. Uh, the first thing uh, that we learn from, I think the two main, main things that we need to see from this uh, s- small change in spelling in the Torah uh, the first thing is, what did Avram do? Avram, first of all, he comes to a new place. The first thing is taking care of Sarah. Okay, it's clear. That, that there's no question, no doubt. That's clearly the way Avram does it every time they arrive in a new place. First of all, takes care of Sarah. Uh, why does he do that? Well, uh, later on, it's going to be in the Gemara, it's going to be in the Alacha. The Rambam, uh, the Rambam says in Lichot Ishut, Perik Tetvav Alacha Yutet, the Rambam says, V'chen tzivu chachamim, שיהיה האדם מכבד את אשתו יותר מגופו ואוהבה כגופו. Okay, so you need to respect your, your wife more than you respect your body. Okay, I don't know how much a person respects his body, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, okay, some people, people that are very involved into, body, into their body, so it's, it's a lot of respect you have to give your wife there. Okay, you need, <laughs> need to watch out on that one. Okay, so yeah, מכבד את אשתו יותר מ... I need to love, like you love your body. A person obviously doesn't want any harm to happen to him. People try and avoid any harm happen, uh, happening to them. Uh, so you, you, it's very clear that the, the Torah is telling us, your wife, it's like your body. It's you. It's part of you. Okay, it's the way it says in... Uh, the way it says in Parashat Brichit, there's the, the, the connection here. It's a very strong connection. It's a bone of my bones. It's a flesh of my flesh. It's a, this is me. Me, me. me and my wife, we won. And we have to see it that way. There's a famous story about Rabbi Ariel Levine that she, he, went to, he goes with his wife to the doctor. The doctor asks about oh, what's happening. And Rabbi Ariel Levine says, my wife's leg hurts us. Okay, there, there's a pain in the leg. He feels it also. It's, it's hurting him. He can't, he can't see. His, his wife uh, is in agony. It's clear that it hurts him also. Uh, and that's the point of view we have to be. Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's all uh, small things. It's uh, uh, different seats, different portions of food, different things. What's there? there there's one better, one, or one, one not so good. Uh, clearly, a person, first of all, takes care of his, uh, of his wife. Okay, that's, uh, that's obviously, that's the way it should be. That's uh, if a person... Uh, takes care of himself, then he's not according to the halacha. Okay, you have to respect him more than, than yourself. Well, why do you want a comfortable seat? Why do you want a better portion of something? Why do you want something uh, that looks more comfortable in any way? No, to, first of all, you need to take care of your wife. So that's the first thing that we, we see here, that for Avraham Avinu, obviously that was clear. And we need to all uh, make sure that we go in in Avraham Avinu's footsteps. The second thing is the way the Torah tells us about it. The Torah doesn't say uh, that Abraham arrived there, 
ויית אוהלה, ואז בנה את אוהלו. It doesn't tell us, first of all, Abraham will be in a true care of Sarah's tent, and then he took care of his tent. Why doesn't the Torah do it that way? There are certain things that shouldn't be exposed. The way spouses take care of each other, and the affection that they have between each other, that's intimate. The minute you take something intimate like that, and you turn it now into something that's public, you've killed it. You've murdered it. It's gone away. It's not going to help. Okay, you decide you're going to surprise your, your wife, your wife's going to surprise her husband, and this whole big surprise and everything. And then what they do, as it's happening, yeah, someone's taking a picture, then normally the, if, it's, if it's meant to be an intimate moment, so the, the actual spouse, instead of being with the person, going, being surprised now, so standing behind, a, uh, holding something in your hand, like uh, not like this, something bigger, yeah, taking a, taking a picture, and then straight away sharing with the whole world. Uh, so you gave the present, you spent the money, you put in all the thought and everything, but you killed the intimacy. You killed the actual relationship. What's really out there for you, uh, you've lost it. You've lost it. Okay, things like that, they need to be intimate, they need to be personal, they need to be something that it's, a, it's, it's just between the couple. Just between, it's got nothing to do with the world outside. Absolutely nothing to do with them. When a couple is close to each other, don't worry. If, if it's important, sometimes it's, it gives an achat for the grandparents, for other people to see how much they care for each other and stuff like that. They'll know. They'll notice it. But when everything's shared all over the world, uh, we see that the, the, this culture of sharing, making everything public, isn't a culture that also supports family life in a good way. Maybe there's no connection, but there's a chance there is. So let's, let's just be cautious of it. Okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's not take the risk. Let's not, let's not risk you know, married life and intimacy for the sake of sharing something like that. So I think these two points are two very important points. First of all, the fact that Abraham, first of all, takes care of his wife. And second of all, it's private. It's a private moment in there. It's, it's something no one else has to know. Only people who really look careful, they'll see what's happening. Okay, that's okay. We need to learn. We need to learn somewhere, one way or another. Shabbat shalom, everyone.